Uh, my name is Tuan and I come from SGI International. Um, I think it's time for us to leave the topic of ethical a little bit. So I got another question for you. So I believe that you hold a very, a lot of key positions in different organizations in Singapore and around the world. So can you give us some advice based on your experience on how to keep your inspiration high and how to do the best and thrive for every position and every opportunities that we have? Because it will happen a lot in a closer scrutiny we can do cope with our subject in school. I think you need to be inspired, really, uh, in the context that we just talked about, uh, about a person, about, about life, uh, the, rest of the, the high respect uh, that you have for life. I think that's very important. You need to be inspired. When you see uh, another being walking uh, next to you, uh, you know, there's an awareness and a consciousness that this person is, uh, is a person, you know. And within Catholic terms, in school, we were taught that this person was made in the image of God. That's an inspiration for you. Even when you see someone of a lowly uh, occupation, for example, uh, you will know that this person uh, was the image of God. And um, um, there, was, there was one day I went to Tan Buniat building, and I saw this uh, man who was sweeping the car park. And he was, he was just resting. He was resting under the tree. And uh, I looked through the back mirror. And I saw that he was quite wistful. You know, he was down. He appeared to be uh, troubled. I drove the car back. And I, I, I had a chat with him. I said, look, what's wrong, you know? Uh, he says, no, oh, I have some difficulty meeting uh, Anne Smith uh, for the family, etc. And uh, if you have that kind of awareness then you are engaged with another human being. You are engaged with a human being because he's a person like you and I. So that has to be that inspiration that you start with, I think, uh, in human life. So when you are... Uh, um, I'm not saying that when you see a girl next door sitting next to you in a bus, ask her how she is. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that you don't go into the philosophy and say, oh, I, I, you are a person, I want to talk to you. Uh, but really the awareness that we are dealing with the lives of human beings and the lives of person, and it's worth helping uh, that particular person. If I can just add on, so uh, the question really also was how, how you've, you've, you have you know, a diverse portfolio even now, uh, but overwhelmingly this is uh, a life of service to others, a public service. Uh, how, how do you translate or your own personal beliefs into what you do now? I mean, uh, obviously... Serving and leading is a core concept of leadership itself. Uh, tell us a little bit about this outlook in terms of wanting to serve. You could have chosen. You went to Harvard Business School. You could have. You could have been, you know, CEO of uh, a multinational company. But you know, you chose the life you chose, and it's one where it's it's serving uh, largely the public. Well, interesting. I was a CEO of a company. Uh, <laughs> I've been engaged in uh, as, as chairman, as as CEO of a company. So I've seen I've seen the sights. I've seen the, all these various sides. So when I talk about effectiveness and leadership, I'm also thinking within the corporate context and all that. But the common bond that moves uh, across is at the end of the day, the person that moves across. Uh, do you leave your ethics behind uh, when you're in a company? Do you leave your ethics behind uh, when you go off school, for example? Uh, it's the same principle. Uh, it, is, it follows you, so to speak. But I think if there's an awareness uh, that ethics is critical, ethics is essential, then it follows you wherever you go. In other words, will you be able to make a difference in your setting? How different are you in your setting from another person? And I'm uh, putting forward the thesis that ethics will enable you to make that difference. Part of the theme has been leadership moments. So I'm just interested if you could share if there has been in your career a leadership moment which has helped shape you. What was the moment and how has it shaped you? Yeah, thank you for, for asking. I think uh, that uh, has been uh, a reflection. I, I remember that uh, I was quite happily working in... Uh, the Ministry of Defense, uh, I was uh, CEO of companies, chairman of companies, so I thought that was life, you know, 
<laughs> okay, we won. Uh, for companies, the agenda was very simple. Get more money, get more profit. In regard to that, I think uh, that was a simple agenda. But when I was posted to the court, suddenly I began to realize uh, that this was a different uh, paradigm altogether. This was an issue that was slightly even uh, beyond what I had uh, experienced for in the past. And the moment then arise, I remember the first day that I, I went to court and I went on to the bench and I had to hear a case and to decide whether this person is guilty or not and being vested with the power to send him to prison. That was a difficult moment. It took me a bit of time uh, for that case. So I did that. Eventually, I, I, I found the person guilty and sent him to prison. I called the lawyer to my chambers and says, please appeal against my decision. I mean, a judge never does that. You know? But I, I, I recognize that this was a moment in which I need to be uh, responsible for the public trust that was entrusted to one person who is called a judge on the bench with powers to incarcerate, with powers to send people to prison, with powers to send, send people free. I think in regard to that. So rights were involved, persons were involved, principles were involved. The rights of the person affected family members uh, who were in court at that time. And uh, that was a moment that sort of etched in my mind. And the significance of the power that's given to us it's a formal power, but the exercise of the power is quite challenging. And it continued to be so, I think, uh, in regard to the other areas.